These glorious birds are called birds of prey, the golden eagle, the American kestrel, the jeer falcon, the saw-wet owl, and the great horned owl. They are all members of a family called birds of prey. Birds of prey are typically birds that kill for a living. They kill other animals using their talons or claws as a weapon. That's what distinguishes a bird of prey from other birds, like blue jays, crows, or robins, who will kill other animals, but not with their talons. Instead, other types of birds use their beaks. Today we're at the Washington Park Zoo in Portland, Oregon. Dave Sidden, an authority on birds of prey, will introduce you to these remarkable birds on this edition of Alphabet Zoop. My name is Dave Sidney. I'm the animal program specialist here at the Washington Park Zoo, and I'm working with a sub-adult male golden eagle named Phoenix. And right now we're going to send him out there and see if he'll perform by flying from me on the stage here all the way out to the perch on the rear of the lawn. Hopefully he'll cooperate with us and fly in a prescribed path. Okay. Go for it, big boy. Give him a moment to rest him, his wings. Okay, good, perfect, that's better. All right, all the way up to the perch. Typically during the good months here, we fly him eight to 10 times a day. When the weather gets foul during the winter time, of course, we have to wait for the weather. Ready? It's a perfect response. Waiting for the whistle, swooping down again, and all the way back up. Good bird. Right now he's mantling, and this is a typical defensive posture that birds of prey take on after they have received food. He's drooping his wings, guarding the food, keeping any intruders from trying to reach down and take that little bit of meat away from him. They typically do get very defensive, very possessive about their food, so we have to be very careful to keep a hold of the jesses, these leather straps, so that when we work around their feet, he does not reach out and grab me with these very powerful talons. Each one of his feet is roughly equivalent in strength to the jaws of a full-grown leopard. They can produce roughly 750 pounds of pressure per square inch with those feet. So if he got excited or angry with me and squeezed down on this glove, he's capable of breaking my arm through the leather he's sitting on. Typically in the wild, the golden eagles feed on jackrabbits, cottontail rabbits, marmots, gophers, ground squirrels, snakes, including even rattlesnakes. So many people have shot them for years, believing them to be a pest, but they're actually quite beneficial to mankind because they're, of course, picking up a lot of animals that we do consider to be a pest and uh, a blight on farms and things like this. They also get their name because of the golden sheen to the feathers on the back of the head here called hackles. And that's where they get the name Golden Eagle. And then in the bright sunlight, these feathers tend to bleach out and become even a more pronounced gold color. He's got a wingspan of approximately six feet, a little over six feet, and he weighs seven and a half pounds, much lighter than he might look. Of course, uh, they are built for flight efficiency, so many of their bones are hollow. Parts of the body, I can show you, the feathers are very deep. You can see right here on the chest how deep the feathers are on this particular bird. And that's a normal, healthy golden eagle. This isn't one with a, a hollow spot uh, that would be unique to him. The golden eagle is the largest bird of prey you will meet today. A much smaller bird of prey is the American kestrel. This is Killer. Killer is an American kestrel. An American kestrel is one of the smallest true falcons in North America today. Like most other falcons, he is a member of a family called birds of prey. And the kestrel is a true falcon. Like most other falcons, they have certain unique characteristics all their own. The second notch on his beak that is probably too small to see from this distance is a unique characteristic to the falcon. Dark colored eyes, that stripe underneath of his eye that looks like mascara running down his cheek. It's another unique characteristic. Long slender toes on his feet and long pointed wings. If I can have Killer spread his wings here, you'll see he has long pointed wings. 
Now, the American kestrel for years was referred to as the sparrowhawk. But uh, recently, the name has been changed because they do not primarily feed on sparrows, and they are not a true hawk. They are actually a falcon. And again, the smallest member of the falcon family we have in North America today. Killer here is a male kestrel. We can tell that by the vivid coloration of his feathers. Typically, with birds of prey, the male and the female have the same coloration. But the kestrel here is an exception to that rule. You can see the male is fairly brightly colored. The female is not in this particular species. Killer came to us because he was hit by an automobile along the side of the highway. He was apparently swooping down after a mouse, and in his quest for the mouse, he forgot about automobiles passing by and was struck by a car. He is now permanently blinded in one eye as a result of that accident, so he cannot be returned back out into the wild again. His depth perception, or ability to judge distances, is so badly impaired that he could not judge distances accurately enough to hunt successfully out in the wild again. Now remember, there are many birds of prey, including this one, the Jeer Falcon. Okay, the bird I have now, where a killer was the smallest true falcon in North America today, you're now looking at the largest true falcon in North America today, called the Jeer Falcon. And this particular individual is not a very large Jeer Falcon by virtue of being a male. Typically, with birds of prey, the males are usually one-third smaller than the female of the same species. Well, killer, the little falcon, the little kestrel that you saw, was about three ounces. A large female jeer falcon may weigh as much as five pounds. So there's quite a difference between the smallest and the largest of the falcons. But all the characteristics are still unique to the falcon family. The black stripe under the eye, or the dark stripe under the eye, dark colored eyes, that second notch on the beak that is more... Uh, parent on a bird this size, the long pointed wings, see, would you spread your wings? And the long slender toes, which are also a characteristic of the falcon. The falcon, unlike most hawks, which actually use brute force to subdue their prey, falcons use speed and finesse. Typically, in a falcon when they are hunting, they're going to dive after their prey, usually another bird, They'll come down at a tremendous rate of speed, make a fist out of their feet, and quite often punch their prey right out of the air. And these birds have been clocked anywhere from a range of 100 miles an hour to some reports a little over 300 miles an hour. And as you can well imagine, being punched at 300 miles an hour would put your lights out pretty quickly. So these birds are a very efficient killing machine out in the wild. Once they do stun the bird, knock it to the ground, then two other physical adaptations come into play. Number one, these feet, the long slender toes, are used to hold their prey to the ground. The second adaptation is that second notch on their beak. It's called a killing tooth, and that notch fits very nicely around the spinal column of their victim. They sever the spinal column and usually don't have to worry about any struggle from that point on with their prey. The kill is very quick and very painless for the prey that they are in, indeed after. And it is a very nice bird to work with. The Jeer Falcon is not typically found in uh, the lower 48 the United States. They're typically found in the Arctic, around Alaska, uh, through the northern parts of Canada, Greenland, a lot of areas. They come in three distinctive different color phases, from the black color to the gray, which you see right here, to a white Jeer Falcon as well. And again, they are the largest of the falcon family in North America. Another small bird of prey is the saw wet owl. Care to meet this little owl? Well, you're looking at now one of the smallest owls in North America called the saw wet owl. And they get their name because apparently if they're frightened or disturbed out in the wild, they make a noise that sounds a little bit like somebody sharpening a saw with a whetstone. So the name saw wet owl fits them quite well. This, this is Clifford. Clifford, when most people look at him, think, what a cute little baby owl, without realizing that Clifford is actually a full-grown adult saw-wet owl. Like most other birds of prey, they are usually full-grown by the time they're 12 weeks out of the egg. They grow very, very rapidly. So right now, Clifford is about two years old and weighs in at about three and a half ounces. may not look so terrifying, but to those that are out in the wild that are grasshoppers, of course, this is terror in their hearts. This little guy would typically, again, feed on grasshoppers, crickets, maybe occasionally small mice, little lizards, and things like this. Clifford, like uh, most other owl, or a lot of other owls in North America, 
is not actually nocturnal. He is called crepuscular, and that term means that he is twilight active. So he starts to go out and hunt when the sun begins to set. He'll hunt until the dead of night. Then he'll sweep through the dead of night. And around dawn, when the sun starts to rise again, he becomes active once again and goes out and hunts. So he typically would hunt twice every day. Clifford here would feed on crickets, grasshoppers, small mice, little lizards, worms, just about anything they get the opportunity to catch out in the wild. Owls, unlike the hawks now, use stealth. They try not to be seen by their prey. They have silent flight, and it's very hard to illustrate with little Clifford here, but when they flap their wings, their wings do not make any noise going through the air because they have a bristly or a fibrous edge to the leading edge of their wing. I'll have him flap his wings. He is rather quiet right there. And these little guys oftentimes come in the care of humans because they nest in the hollow portion of old dead trees. Many times people will come along with an axe looking for some firewood. They'll cut down the dead tree without realizing that these little guys are nesting in a hollow in that tree. Our last bird of prey is the great horned owl. Let's join Dave Sidden as he describes this beautiful bird. I'll take you, Hooter. Yeah, you tell him. Come on, sweetheart. Atta boy. Now, Hooter is a great horned owl, where Clifford was one of the smallest owls in North America today. The great horned owl is one of the largest and a very unique bird of prey. Now, Hooter here is a typical male great horned owl, so he isn't a very large individual once again. They get their name because of these feathery tufts you can see on top of their head. They're not horns at all. They are simply feathers that stand up. You can stand them up or lay them down at will. Some people believe that those feathery tufts are used as a silent way of communicating between great horned owls. They may be a way to break up their silhouette sitting in a tree during the daytime, so that it adds to their camouflage ability. And again, it may make the bird look more ferocious, so they are not as likely to be attacked by other predatory animals. But as I can show you, he can stand these up and lay them down anytime he likes to. It's full control over them. Uh, often a misconception that people have with owls is that they can turn their head all the way around. They actually cannot. He can turn his head 270 degrees, which would be three quarters of the way around. Great horned owls are quite vocal oftentimes, and we might be lucky enough to get Hooter here to vocalize a little for us. You want to talk to people? Hooter. That's me. I'm trying to get him to talk to me. Hooter. Hey. He's been talking all day until he gets on camera, naturally. Hooter. Well, the great horned owl is also called, quite often, the winged tiger, because they are so ferocious when they are out in the wild. They typically prey on jackrabbits, cottontail rabbits, marmots, ground squirrels, many of the same animals that most other birds of prey feed on. However, they add a very unique animal to their diet quite commonly. They are the only bird of prey that we know of that will, time and time again, actually kill and eat skunks. And, of course, if you've had one before, chances are you would not want to attack one after you've done that before. The great horned owl does, however. So they are very beneficial to all of us. Uh, they are not only good to have around, they probably do protect a lot of the crops. And oftentimes, they're shot around farmlands because people do feel that they are a pest when they're not really that way at all. The great horned owl, like the little sawwood owl you saw earlier, also is gifted with silent flight. We can try to illustrate with it, that with him. And let me have him spread his wings. Now he's going to hoot. That voice sounds like a Rolls Royce. Well, also, the great horned owl, like the sawwood owl and all of the other owls, does have that fringe on the leading edge of the wing. I don't know if you can see it, but if you could, on the leading edge of these feathers, there's a little bristle, which allows them to fly totally silently. a boy. And typically, he again is a crepuscular owl, or twilight actor. We can tell that by the color of his eyes. As you can see, his eyes are very large and yellow in color, indicating that he is a crepuscular owl. The truly nocturnal owls typically have dark colored eyes, like dark brown or black. Remember, what makes these birds belong to the family known as birds of prey is that they kill other animals using their talons or claws as weapons. The birds of prey, fascinating and beautiful birds for us all to appreciate and enjoy.